Are we living in a simulation? Have you ever pondered the idea that the world as we know it might just be a cleverly crafted illusion? What if everything you thought was real was nothing more than a complex simulation, orchestrated by a higher intelligence that surpasses our human comprehension? The concept may sound like the plot of a science fiction movie. In fact, it has inspired The Matrix, where intelligent machines keep humans immersed in a simulation of reality. But it may not be so fictional after all. In recent years, the simulation hypothesis has gained popularity among prestigious philosophical, respected scientists, and wealthy tech entrepreneurs' circles. This theory suggests that our reality might be a simulated or artificial construct, rather than what we perceive as the real world. It proposes that we might actually be living in a video game-like simulation that is indistinguishable from reality. While this idea is not new, recent technological advancements have made it a more plausible notion. So, what if the universe is not made of physical matter, but of bits and bytes of data that instruct a program that creates our sense of reality? Join us as we analyze all the arguments for and against this hypothesis. But first, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Let's get started. The notion that we might exist in a simulated reality is not a novel idea, but rather one that has roots in philosophical inquiries dating back centuries. One famous example is Plato's Allegory of the Cave, which presents the idea that our perception of reality is limited by our senses and that there may be a higher, hidden truth beyond what we can directly experience. This allegory serves as an early contemplation of the possibility that our perceived reality is not the ultimate reality. In more recent times, the philosopher Nick Bostrom has brought attention to the simulation argument through his influential work. Bastrom formulated a compelling trilemma that explores the implications of advanced civilizations creating simulated realities. Bastrom's trilemma states that at least one of the following must be true. 1. The first option suggests that most civilizations that reach our level of technological advancement eventually fade away before they have the capability to create sophisticated simulations of reality. In this scenario, the lack of highly developed civilizations capable of simulating reality would explain why we have no evidence of such simulations. Two. The second option proposes that civilizations capable of creating realistic simulations may exist, but they are simply uninterested in doing so. Whether due to ethical considerations or a lack of motivation, these civilizations choose not to delve into the hard work of creating simulated realities. 3. The third option, perhaps the most intriguing, suggests that we are indeed living in a computer simulation. According to this possibility, an advanced civilization, possibly far beyond our current understanding, has created and is overseeing the simulation within which our existence is housed. If we accept the premise that an advanced civilization could create a simulation that is indistinguishable from reality, and if we also accept that they would be interested in doing so, then it is reasonable to assume that they would create many such simulations. Thus, if there are multiple simulations of reality, it is far more likely that we inhabit one of those simulations than that we exist in the single base reality. However, we must state that Bastrom's argument does not claim to provide conclusive evidence that we are living in a simulation or not, but rather to demonstrate that it is a realistic possibility. In the spirit of intellectual curiosity and scientific inquiry, 
Academics and intellectuals have set out to study the viability of the simulation hypothesis. The research of this idea has captivated the imagination of many in numerous disciplines of inquiry, from analyzing the limitations of computing power to investigating the nature of consciousness and the potential motivations of advanced simulated beings. One of the critical pieces of evidence supporting the simulation hypothesis is the exponential growth of computing power over the past few decades. Moore's law, named after Intel co-founder Gordon Moore, states that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles approximately every two years. For several decades, this exponential expansion has fueled technical advancement at an unprecedented rate. The implications of Moore's law are profound. With each passing year, our computational capabilities expand exponentially enabling us to process larger amounts of data and perform more complex calculations. As computing power continues to advance, it raises intriguing possibilities for simulating intricate and realistic virtual worlds. We don't have to go too far, consider the progress made in the realm of computer graphics. Video games and virtual reality experiences have evolved tremendously, becoming more immersive and visually stunning. The rendering of detailed and lifelike environments, along with sophisticated physics simulations, has become increasingly feasible due to the exponential growth of computing power. This progress highlights our ability to create and inhabit virtual realities that closely resemble our own physical world. Extrapolating this technological growth tendency into the future, theoretically, we may see a day when processing power reaches a level that enables the construction of simulations that are indistinguishable from our reality. If current advancements continue, it is plausible to believe that modeling entire worlds with intricate ecosystems, intelligent individuals, and rich dynamics will one day be possible. Virtual reality technologies have made significant advancements in recent years, giving us a glimpse into how immersive simulated environments can become. Although current VR systems are still far from being indistinguishable from reality, they showcase the potential for future technology to create fully convincing artificial worlds. So far, VR technologies have revolutionized the way we explore and interact with virtual worlds. Equipped with specialized headsets and motion tracking controllers, Users can immerse themselves in simulated environments that engage their senses of sight, sound, and even touch. One of the main goals of VR is to create a sense of presence and immersion for the user. By simulating real-world interactions and sensory experiences, VR can trick our brains into perceiving the virtual environment as genuine. Alongside the rise of VR, there have been significant advances in the fields of artificial intelligence AI and machine learning. As AI technologies advance, they become more capable of processing and analyzing massive amounts of data, enabling them to learn more efficiently and accurately. These capabilities offer significant potential to create more engaging and immersive simulations that could become simulators of reality. As we know, AI and machine learning have also enabled the creation of chatbots and virtual assistants capable of mimicking human interactions. These technologies have already demonstrated their potential to create bots capable of passing the Turing test a test to determine whether a machine can mimic human-like responses convincingly. This capability is proof that AI has the potential to create virtual beings with thoughts and emotions that could interact with us in simulated environments. So one day, possibly, 
you will genuinely ask yourself, am I talking to a robot or a human? Indistinguishability while technology-related evidence supports the possibility of creating such a simulation, philosophical arguments provide an analytical framework for examining the probability of our reality being a simulation. So, let's examine it the philosophical concept of indistinguishability that suggest that a simulated reality could eventually be advanced enough to replicate what we perceive as real accurately. Indistinguishability refers to the lack of any perceivable difference between the simulated reality and our perceived reality. This concept creates a philosophical challenge, as it is impossible to prove definitively the existence of a simulated reality that has reached the level of indistinguishability. The simulation hypothesis holds that our current reality is a simulation, and if advanced enough, it would be indistinguishable from the reality we are currently experiencing. However, even if we could generate evidence of indistinguishably, there is no guarantee that our universe is not naturally designed to appear simulated so it is difficult to prove definitively that we live in a simulation. A total head-scratcher, right? Some phenomena in our universe, such as quantum mechanics, have been cited as possible evidence for the simulation hypothesis. Some believe that the underlying code of our reality manifests itself in the form of mathematical formulas and processes which are remarkably similar to those found in computer simulation. Essentially, if the fabric of our universe is defined by mathematical laws and processes, it is possible that these laws and processes are the result of a computer program running a simulated universe. Another possibility is the theory of the multiverse, a fascinating idea that has captivated the imagination of both scientists and science fiction enthusiasts alike. This theory proposes the existence of an infinite number of parallel universes, each with its own set of physical laws, properties, and even alternate versions of ourselves. According to the multiverse theory, our universe is but one tiny speck in a vast cosmic ocean of other universes. Each of these parallel universes exists simultaneously, yet independently from one another. This breathtaking notion implies that there could be an infinite number of realities, each with its own unique set of rules that govern the behavior of matter, energy, and even the very fabric of reality itself. If we consider the multiverse theory with the simulation hypothesis, we find that it suggests that each of these parallel universes is a distinct simulation running on a cosmic computer with its own set of parameters and rules. This connection between multiverse theory and the simulation hypothesis raises profound questions about the nature of our existence. Are we mere players in an elaborate cosmic video game, controlled by an advanced civilization? Could our perceptions of reality be mere simulations generated within these parallel universes? While the simulation hypothesis presents a very interesting and striking perspective on the question that all philosophers have been asking for hundreds of years, the nature of our reality, it is essential to consider those arguments that question its validity. These counterarguments shed light on important issues such as complexity, ethics, and falsifiability, which contribute to the ongoing debate surrounding the simulation hypothesis. One of the main counterarguments against the simulation hypothesis revolves around the sheer complexity of simulating an entire universe. Critics argue that the level of detail and computational power required to simulate every subatomic particle and the intricate interactions between them would far surpass the capabilities of even the most advanced hypothetical future technologies. 
It becomes a massive task to model each particle's position, momentum, and behavior in a vastly expanded virtual universe. The amount of resources required for the Nessus recalculation and storage would be inconceivable high and might go beyond what is technically possible. Therefore, critics wonder if any society, regardless of how advanced, could have the resources needed to produce such a complex simulation. And what about the ethical implications of creating a simulated universe filled with conscious beings? The most important question critics ask is whether an advanced civilization would have the moral justification to carry out such a work. If our reality is the product of the simulation of an advanced civilization, then we raise ethical issues about the creation of intelligent beings solely for purposes of experimentation or observation. Let us take as an example a very common comparison video games. One particular aspect of the ethical implications is the treatment of simulated beings in video games. As we know them, they often present a myriad of scenarios, among which we include harm and violence. Therefore, the question arises as to whether it is unethical to involve humans in these simulated spaces. The mere existence of evil and suffering in a simulated world makes us question the goodness of the creator or the simulator. What, then, would be the ethical justifications for an advanced civilization to create an entire universe, or several intertwined universes, with conscious beings? Finally, the concept of falsifiability presents a significant challenge to the simulation hypothesis. Falsifiability refers to the ability of a theory to be proven or disproven through empirical or experimental means. Critics argue that the simulation hypothesis may be inherently unfalsifiable meaning that it cannot be conclusively proven or disproven through scientific methods alone. Since the simulation hypothesis introduces a reality that escapes our current understanding, it is difficult to conceive of experimental evidence or observations that could provide concrete evidence for or against its validity. The lack of it puts its credibility at stake and it may fall outside empiricism and rigorous scientific methodology. The simulation hypothesis presents a seductive and suggestive perspective on the nature of our reality. This idea has emerged from the convergence of multiple fields, from technological advances to philosophical resolutions, and presents tantalizing hints about the possibility of living in a simulated universe. However, despite the intriguing evidence, empirical data to support or refute this idea are still lacking. To create an entire universe from scratch, to meticulously simulate every particle, every interaction, every nuance of existence, is a feat that seems beyond the realm of possibility. The enormity of such work, coupled with the ethical dilemmas it raises, casts doubt on the plausibility of a simulated reality. And yet, the complexity and captivating nature of the simulation hypothesis hint that impossibility may not be the only outcome. Beyond abstract observation lies a deeper truth. The exploration of the simulation hypothesis has unleashed a torrent of new avenues of understanding. It invites us to examine in depth the layers of existence, to question the very essence of our consciousness and to unravel the enigma of reality itself. The debate it inspires is a testimonial of the human thirst for knowledge. The question of whether our world is nothing more than a simulated construct or a product of our own organic reality remains open, and only time, the judge of truth, will tell whether the notion of our world as simulation moves from the script of science fiction to the books of scientific fact.